And welcome back to Microqueers. It's your queer horror short roundup, and I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and we're talking, oh man, a thing that like hit a little too close to home for me, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you got a checkered shirt in that closet of yours? <laughs> no, okay, so everyone, we're talking uh, <laughs> The Outfit, which is a short film directed by Yen Tan and starring AJ Bowen. And, no, okay, so, Joe, can you give them the log line and then we can, because I do want to talk about this. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So it's a very brief log line, and the bare bones is a congressman is haunted by an outfit that won't go away. Okay, and the lengthier explanation of that is he is a Republican slash conservative politician yes. who took a picture recently of a shirt and, you know, maybe holding a wine glass a bit fey and mm-hmm. has his arm around a man and he's being accused of being gay. Hey, the reason I say this hit home for me is because before I came out in my teenage years, I was so focused on how I was presenting, be it oh. my clothes, mm-hmm. my mannerisms, and to a point where even one time, like, I was walking down the street, uh, down the mall with my mom, and I had my hand, I think I've told you this before, but like, I had my hand kind of up in a way where, like, my hand was, like, kind of hanging loose, oh, sure. and she slapped it down and just goes, don't do that, only, only women and gay men do that. Yep. And... So I I feel for this clearly gay character because it's like you, oh my God, like you microanalyze yourself when you're not out to make sure you don't present as queer. Yep. And the problem with a picture is that it's not something that you often have control over, right? So this is a very candid picture. He's having a conversation with a man. Somebody says, hey, congressman, he turns and the picture gets snapped. And then all of a sudden it goes viral with all these people analyzing, oh, the posture, oh, the clothes, oh, the belt. And the most funny thing about this short, because this is really much more a comedy short than necessarily a horror short. Right. I was expecting a full blown like in fabric from the log line. Right. So I was yeah. pleased that we actually get like a more comedic approach to it. Yeah, but my favorite thing about this, like, we're talking around it, but when you watch the short, if you haven't already done so, it's literally a plaid shirt with a belt. (laughs) There's nothing gay about it. And that's what's hilarious about this short, right? Is that people are so fixated on reading into it what they will and what this man has clearly been trying to repress, and yet it's coming out in things like costume. Well, then I have a question for you then, too, because do you think that A.J. Bowen was maybe playing the character a bit more effeminate than how A.J. Bowen actually is? I have no idea. I mean, my only experience with A.J. Bowen is the couple of horror films that he's shown up in. So I'm thinking of You're Next, and it's apples and oranges, so. Yeah. And you're right, I don't have much. I mean, (laughs) honestly, when I think of A.J. Bowen, I should think of You're Next, but the first thing I think of is, um, wait, you're not the babysitter from The House of the Devil? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Very funny. I did feel like he was playing him a bit more stereotypically gay. Not not a caricature, which was appreciated, Mm -hmm. but to the point where, like, I could tell by his mannerisms and maybe even his vocal inflection that he was gay. Now, granted, that may be an unfair generalization on my part, or um, I'm stereotyping, maybe. Because that also may just be how he acts. (laughs) Maybe. But it's also a really good look into internalized homophobia and how he tries to blame everyone else for, like, this picture and this outfit. Yeah, he blames his girlfriend. He gets really irrationally angry at her. He gets upset with his assistant. (laughs) Like, it's all a little bit on the nose because it's broad comedy. But the part that really struck home for me was when his mom calls and she's just like, what are you doing with this outfit? Your dad and I are so mad at you right now. And you're just thinking, oh, wow. Okay. It's no wonder he didn't feel comfortable when the support mechanisms around you are like your assistant talking about how funny it is that in the article, it's so gay that it's like you had anal sex with the Wizard of Oz. (laughs) Or your mom, who's like a, a horrible old crone. 
And it's so funny because that 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 zinger about the Wizard of Oz, I didn't even think was that funny. I was like, come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all can do a better, like, that's so gay joke. <laughs> I know. You're not having sex with the Wizard of Oz. You're having right. sex with, like, the Red Slippers. <laughs> gay it up. Um, I do think it falls into the stereotype to a little bit of, like, oh, a man is gay because he has an oppressive mother who, like, o- is overbearing on him. Sure. But at the same time, like, she's clearly, like... Again, a super conservative old lady um, who wouldn't be out of place in the antebellum time period. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Check out that Patreon episode. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I found this this quite amusing. I think, I mean, the second the shirt comes back, you know exactly where like where it's going. Yeah, yeah. The shirt is a metaphor. <laughs> it's the gayness you can't get rid of. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But I do like even the joy that he takes in all of these different methods to try to get rid of it. First, I'm just going to try throwing it away, and it escalates all the way to burying it and lighting it on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so when the short was making the rounds, your place of work, the Austin Chronicle, actually did a profile of him. And it says that Yen Tan was inspired by a real political scandal back in 2015. And I think we all know which one we're talking about, right? Actually, you may not know this one. As I say, wait, which one is that? <laughs> Shit, what's his name? Uh, it's the one who was, like, terrible for gay rights, but he, like, posted pictures of himself working out all the time. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, I also think that I saw the the feature film. Oh, my God, yeah, Yen Tan did um, 1985. 1985? Oh, okay, so sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I, I didn't realize this. So Yen Tan did a movie called 1985. It has Virginia Madsen and Michael Chiklis as parents to a man in 1985 who is gay, but they don't know. And the guy that plays the gay man is um, Corey Michael Smith, who plays uh, the Riddler in the Gotham TV show. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him a lot. But it's all black and white. It's filmed on, I think, 16 millimeter. And okay. he's contracted HIV. And he goes home to basically tell his parents and his old girlfriend, played by Jamie Chung. It's a really good film. It it's lacking something in the third act that like really lets it hit home. But it's a really, really good indie film that's a pretty honest portrayal of, of gay life, and I'm assuming as it would have been in nineteen eighty five for a man with HIV. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm always excited when our shorts directors have also made features because it's something to look forward to. Well, and also it's a, it's an adaptation of his short, nineteen eighty five from twenty sixteen. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. So, sorry, we're not talking about that short, y'all, but <laughs> it was like one of those, like, oh my god, I'm, I'm realizing this as we're talking about this type things. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was looking, and unfortunately I can't find, I can picture him in my mind, but this real political scandal that happened back in 2015, it was a conservative governor or senator, a very good looking white man, immaculately mm-hmm. dressed, constantly being photographed like here's me weightlifting and here's me water skiing and people were just like who is this homo trying to fool but (laughs) this person was advocating against gay rights at every measure just like an absolutely terrible human being and eventually he ended up coming out as gay of course but right. only after he was eventually kicked out for, like, embezzlement of something. Like, I think he was using his campaign funds to, like, fly him and his boyfriend around the country on various events and shit. So, anyway, Yen Tan has noted that he's found this amusing correlation to the most outspoken supporters of anti-LGBTQ legislation who sometimes come out to be closeted. And that duality is more common than we know. Well, and yeah, that is correct. And at least the way that this short film heads, it's a much more positive resolution than I would have expected. Yeah. I like that he embraces his uh, inclination towards pop music. (laughs) (laughs) Another stereotype, albeit not necessarily a, um, an incorrect one. one. Yeah. (laughs) Says the man who, as of the date of this recording, was actively arguing about which album was Britney Spears' best. Uh, better. I'm sorry, not the best, but the better one. Um... (laughs) But yes, that that is correct. Femme fatale, huh? Okay. <laughs> I, I actually meant to Shazam the song he was listening to to be like, I wonder if it's like a real like popular. Oh, I movie. think it was made for the short because the oh. lyrics were on brand for like exactly what he was thinking. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, ideally, you know, we hope that after the end of this, he, I don't know, switches sides. 
Yeah, right? <laughs> Ditches the girlfriend, stops talking to mom, and switches sides, yeah. Well, so, okay, then would you watch a feature-length film of this? Knowing that I have just told you that Tan has turned one of his previous shorts into a feature-length film, do you think he could make this work? Uh, I mean, I think it's already been made as a feature-length film. It's called In and Out with Kevin Klein. <laughs> okay, but he's not a politician in that movie, but yes. I love In and Out, but even, I mean, watching it today, you know, it's a little... Oh, it's dated. <laughs> it's dated. It's very dated. Um, it's very stereotypical. Um, and listeners, if you have not seen In and Out, I would still recommend watching it. Um, because it, it was very progressive for I think yeah. 1998 when it came out. Definitely uh, mid late 90s. But I could see you doing something like this that was maybe not something that was like too slapsticky and silly, but like maybe a bit more nuanced comedy and make it more of a character study. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like flush these characters out and look at the actual struggle, but then you could still make it funny. Like the idea of a garment that simply won't leave you alone and is like, oh my God, get that gay shirt away from me. <laughs> There's comedy to be mine from that. We have so many metaphors for things like grief and depression in horror films. We just discussed a film, a short last week that had demons with queerness, depending mm -hmm. on how you read it. So why not have one that's just a piece of fabric? <laughs> yeah. Give me that gay plaid shirt. <laughs> and we haven't even discussed her, but I actually really liked Anna Margaret Holliman as his girlfriend, who I think was more liberal. I got the impression. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, she yeah. definitely wanted him to be more socially liberal. So that's that. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> yeah, um, but I totally watch a feature length version. So listeners, let us know what you think. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Um, did you find it funny or not funny? What did you think of that ending? Let us know. And until next week, though, we can cross out the outfit. Yes, and cross out micro queers. Hello, I'm Shelby Scott, the host of Scare You to Sleep a podcast where I tell you spooky bedtime stories full of creepy sound effects and music that is soothing yet unsettling to help immerse you into a world of horror. This is a show for those of us who have realized horror can be a strange but relaxing escape from reality. Speaking of escapes, sometimes I lead you through guided nightmares, like a guided meditation, but instead of flowery meadows, I take you on a journey through your own personal nightmare. So come get lost in the terror with me. Listen to Scare You to Sleep wherever you listen to podcasts or find us online at bloody.fm. Sweet screams. <laughs>